Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to study about the investigations which are carried out whenever we plan a reservoir. So let's start. So what is a reservoir that we have already seen? So it is a barrier which is constructed across a river to store the water or for any other purpose that may be related to the level of water in the river. Now to plan this reservoir which is storing the water or is avoiding the flood, we have to design this structure. So for any reservoir planning, various investigations are required to be carried out and they are majorly classified in three categories. First one is that we need to carry out the extensive engineering surveys. That is the first one. Second one is the hydrological investigations which are to be carried out. That what is the natural rainfall condition in the particular area where this reservoir is to be situated. What is the return period of a particular storm? How many or what is the capacity of the channel to carry the water? All of these is to be taken into account. And the third one is the geological investigation. That means what is the structure of the rock or the earth crust beneath, <clears throat> beneath the reservoir? All of these factors are to be accounted in. So first one is the engineering surveys. Now when we talk about the engineering surveys, the area of the proposed reservoir that is extensively surveyed and corresponding to that we prepare the contour plan. Now what is this contour plan? So this is a plan which is showing the lines joining points of equal elevation. It is a plan which is showing the lines joining the points of equal elevation. So the points which are at the same elevation from the mean sea level they will be located or will be represented by a line. The other one which are at the lower level they will be connected by another line. So the difference between these two will tell us that from which line the flow will be taking place and towards which line the water will be going. That we will get to know with the help of this contour plan. Now this contour plan is very useful for fixing the height of the dam. Because based upon that only we will prepare the head difference and we will evaluate the area that will come under the effect of the flowing water and that will be submerged because this is the major problem whenever we create any kind of reservoir. So we need to rehabilitate, we need to rehabilitate the people which are inhibiting in that area, we need to move them into a certain new position. So for that we need to correctly evaluate the area that will be submerged and fixing the position of the spillway or the sluiceways or whatever river training work that we are providing in the development of a reservoir. Now for this purpose the area elevation curve and the storage elevation curve, they are drawn from the contour plan. So as you can see, this first curve is representing the area elevation curve. That means with the increase in the elevation, as we are increasing the elevation, the water spread is also increasing. Because if let's say we are storing the water at certain higher location 
so the area which will be submerged if that is released that will be a higher area but if we are storing the water on a flat terrain that means at lower elevation the spread of the water will be very less similarly the other curve is the capacity elevation curve so as we are increasing the elevation the capacity is also increasing so both the curves are the increasing curves with the elevation next survey is regarding the hydrological investigations now it is also a very important aspect because only the hydrological parameter tell us about the return period tell us about the return period of the storm that we commonly call as the flood so that after what duration the same flood of the same intensity or the magnitude will be returning to that particular area and based upon the frequency of those floods we would like to design our structure so the capacity of the reservoir its potential for irrigation or power generation all of it depend upon the availability of the water from the reservoir now this water is available through the rainfall and that rainfall is studied under the hydrological conditions so that's why we need to carry out the suitable hydrological investigations for the reservoir now that in turn will affect the capacity of the spillway the storage capacity of the reservoir and the height of the dam all of this depend upon the amount of available water and for that the rainfall records the catchment characteristics the spread of the catchment the climatic characteristics all of these are very important for the analysis of the reservoir hydrologically and the last one in the investigations is the geological investigation now whenever we carry out any civil engineering project be it for the irrigation or for any type of construction geological advice is considered very essential because initially it cost very little but if there is a failure then it cost very dearly so it relieves the engineer from the worry of the possible presence of the fissure rocks now this fissure rock is shown in the image so these cracks which appear in the rocks they are known as the fissures or other geological faults now what will happen as the earth is having certain plates on which the crust is resting on these plates under the tectonic forces they continuously move now if there is a friction between the two plates there will be a movement which may cost too much if they are come to the notice at the later stages because ultimately the structure will be doomed so the reservoir basin whatever we are constructing that should be water tight without any embedded fissured formations that is the first thing that is kept in geological investigation what is the position of the ground water table if the ground water table is having the different elevation that it would be having certain uplift characteristics so that is why it is also an important criteria then what is the type of soil whether it can sustain the weight of the dam whether it can be treated as the foundation of the dam or not all of this is to be factored in then the type and the depth of the surface soil it should not happen that the soil is only several centimeters deep so the structure would not be supported on the rocks it should have proper embedment and the position of the quarry sites for the materials whatever is required for the construction of dam because if quarry sites are not located 
near to the construction of dam then the transportation cost would be very high and the trial pits are also bored in the catchment area so to investigate the geological conditions of these complete the investigations for the reservoir planning now based upon these investigation techniques we will consider the different criteria based upon which the reservoir site is selected that we will study in the next video thank you